it was 2013. I was a journalist, young, flamboyant, provocative and probing. I was covering parliament at that time. So I wrote a series of insightful articles touching on the powers that be at parliament, mainly the interplay of the current battle of speakership. What we predicted in 2013 is still taking shape in 2020, towards 2021. At that time, <coughs> the late Nevanda, Serena of Butale, the Butaleja district woman MP had died under mysterious circumstances. But the issue that journalists were probing at parliament was to recall parliament to debate the circumstances that shaped or influenced the death of this young female lawmaker. We went into the insights of the interplay of power in parliament. We wrote a damning article saying Oranyan Speaker Kadaga, Oranya was the deputy, who is still the deputy now, why they are fighting over who should control power at parliament. So the speaker was so annoyed about those damning articles. So she, she fired us from parliament. So from that time, a lawyer took up our case, went for judicial review of, to quash the orders of the speaker. Freedom of expression has been a struggle from independence, the Jolly George Wanukas, the Obote regime came. You remember the imprisonments of the Jolly Joes. This man uh, who, who wrote that Uganda, um, seven, this is the 43rd district of Uganda, he went to Rwanda. Even Njuchi, who was released on a stretcher from Luzira at that time. But over the years, you've seen so many constitutional petitions, the, the Oboz, Andrew Mwenda petitions, kind of flashing out the key elements that are plugging this freedom. For instance, in Uganda right now, you are free to publish false news. Freedom of expression is for everyone. The media is just a professional aspect. But you have artists, musicians, they are being empowered. They are coming into the political ground, into uh, blood day activism, hardball politics, playing a role that initially you would not expect them to do play in the society. So you've seen the UCC regulations that have been bucketed after a strong spirit, a spirited fight by the artists. They were trying to close in onto their expression and they raised red flags. So the media also needs that bit of organization. The, the, these Ujias, the Ganjanais Association, all those pockets of associations need to form one front for you to to drive your point home, you see the Uganda Law Society. Once it speaks, it's in unison, the Uganda Medical Association. So the artists came out through their organization and the minister was forced to withdraw the regulation. So by going out on the streets, being vocal, coming up full throttle on the excesses, I think government knows the red line, that once you push people to the wall, something will come out. So we need uh, concerted activism as media, because media plays a role. We flash out the wrong points. You are a human rights defender. So the, can the public also start to fight for the media in this country? Why would government close monitor and the public is not out on the streets? Those are the contradictions that we must address as a society. That any excess on the media infringes all rights in chapter four. Even you not have a voice to, for your message to reach to the public. So the public must understand the interconnectedness between the media, activism, government, and also <coughs> The, the other fields of free freedom of expression. Okay.